What's going on guys? Today's video, we are going to be working on my E200 Razor electric scooter. We are gonna be doing a lithium ion battery swap with cobalt 24 volt, two amp battery. Each one is two amps. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be placing them in line. So we're gonna have a total of 48 volts, four amps. We have our little power source here, which is not mandatory, but makes it a lot convenient for this project. You guys can come up with a mold if you really wanted to or not. This is what it looks like. It connects slides into the battery pack, has two USBs here. We'll get to that later down the road. We have our charger as well, and I will try to link all of this action in the description box. We also have a thousand watt controller. We have a throttle with a voltage meter right here and some XT60 connectors with heat sink right there. It's not the cheapest modification to be honest with you, but it is a fun modification. Of course you can do this. Most people do it with the E300. The E200 has the same motor, just a smaller tire size. We should be good to go, but if we run into any complications, I'll let you guys know. Of course, this will be okay for the E200 and E300. I do have an E175. I believe that is too small and probably too dangerous to max that out, but fun nonetheless. So the first thing we're gonna see here is obviously the top is off. It's really simple. You're gonna have a couple screws back here in the back on the back of the razor top. There's gonna be some little nuts on the bottom, so you're gonna have to get two wrenches and then your electric drill or screwdriver. Then you're gonna have two long ones right back here and here on the top plate. Obviously my top plate is right over here. Then you have two Allens here and on the other side. And then you have two little short ones here and here. After those little bolts and screws are taken out, the top plate comes off really easily like that. And I actually have one battery already perched up. That actually was just sitting in, in line, just like that. There is the original controller, which we're gonna swap out to the thousand watt controller. You do have a small bar going across the top of the battery packs with this little foam pad here. That is to hold down the battery so nothing slides around. There it is right there. I think the other one I just showed you was for my E175. There's the E200s. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to swap out the controller with the 1000 watt controller that I've purchased. We might be jimmy rigging some new XD60 connectors on those connectors. So the first thing we're gonna do with the 1000 watt controller here is obviously some of those labels are marked a little interesting. I'll show you that in a little bit. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get some magic marker and we're just gonna go ahead and put like battery pack. We're gonna put like charging port, you know, maybe put like CP for charging port, just so that I know what, what the female connectors are going to. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably put those both on the female, which is this one, and the male connector which is this one right there. I'm gonna go ahead and be putting that on port, like so for charge port, CP, CP, so I know which ones are which, just in case I get confused later down the road. We have that back battery wire coming over here, and it actually connects the red one down below. We'll go ahead and pull that one. And then the top one that comes around the back is black, and that's for the top, and those obviously just pry right off like that, just slides right back. And those wires were on there. That is the reset button there. Okay, next to the reset button obviously is the power switch right here. And this top one, that is for the charging port. You slip that one off, I already have. And then you have two more. Go ahead and slip that one off and that one off. And then to remove the controller, you have one Phillips screw straight down. And then this one might be a little tricky here, but you should have one more right there back right. We still have this connector here, which comes back to the back battery here. We'll go ahead and label that one and disconnect that one. We're gonna go ahead and remove the battery packs now that that last cable is unplugged. If they're still legitimate, then we can put them aside and we can sell them or we can use them for another project. We do have the charging port one here, which is a red and black. We also have another red and black one here. If you follow the line down, it'll actually go into the bottom tube here and we have it going right through here. That might be for the braking system. I'm not exactly sure quite yet, or that could be for the throttle. Now with our controller completely out, since this model is a little bit older, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up with some rags. We're gonna go ahead and make sure this is nice and clean before we resume. 
And this cable connector right here with the two thick wires that runs all the way back, that obviously is for your motor connector there. I jumped ahead, so ignore this. Let's go back. So we have our 1000 watt controller here. The red and black wires we see that have the thick gauge wires, that is for our battery. Again, the red and black wires. The thick gauge yellow and blue, that is for our motor. That is a female connector right there. That we're gonna go ahead and keep because our motor has a male connector on the end, so that will be able to connect. This one, we are gonna snip off and we are gonna go ahead and solder on a male XT60 connector so that we can use our cobalt batteries in line two 24s in line to make a total of 48 volts. So let's go ahead and snip these off, solder these wires into this, and that will be complete for that portion for the battery. All right, there we are, guys. We have our XT60 connector soldered on, and electrical tape will be your friend if you aren't the best solderer. Sometimes the shrink wrap won't fit over the ends of the solder if for some reason it's not as smooth as you'd like it to be. The job gets done, but electrical tape is your friend once again. Fantastic. We do need to install our throttle. In order to put on our control variable throttle with voltage meter right there for your battery, as we see here, it comes with a female connector that has green, red, and black with the blue and yellow off to the side here. The blue and yellow control the function of the key. So if you want to use that, of course, go ahead and do that. I am going to go ahead and connect that properly. But what we're going to do here, since we don't have this connector on our 1000 watt controller here, over here on the 1000 watt controller, you're going to see a tab right here that says derailer. If you have this exact same 1000 watt controller, I will again try to link all this in the description box below. We have a green, a black, and a red. Three wires connected to that female connector that says derailer. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut these three wires and we're gonna go ahead and take an old power supply connector from a computer, a male and a female right here. And we're gonna go ahead and snip off those connectors and use these wires. But of course, there's four wires coming out of this. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be connecting the yellow to the green. We're gonna skip the second one next to the yellow. We're gonna go over here to this black to the black and then the red, of course, to the red. So the one right next to the yellow, skip that. We're gonna go ahead and electrical tape that up and just use this black one here my thumb is on and the red there. All right guys, so we're gonna be replacing the throttle with my new throttle. So what we're gonna do here is down here in the compartment, it's a little dark and my apologies, but there is a little slide up contraption, and that holds your cords in right there just slides right up and that gives you access to those wires there. There's a little kind of a donut type of a little object there. Go ahead and put that back when you're ready to put that back. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come up to the throttle. We have an Allen wrench screw right here where my finger is pointing to. We're gonna go ahead and loosen that up and that will loosen up the whole throttle system here. And then we do need to take off our grip Easiest way to do that, of course, you want to remove, if, if you have your tire inflatable stick in here, remove that first, of course. My stick has already been removed. And pry that up gently, spray some WD-40 in there. That will loosen it up, it'll slip right off, it's amazing. All right, with the grip off, let's go ahead and slip off our throttle here. Slips right off. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna unbundle it from the connected wires, trace it all the way back to the bottom, pull that out. So most likely if you got this kind of throttle, it did probably come with another matching grip like this. And the simplest way, again, like I mentioned, use WD-40, squirt it in the edge of the old scooter grip, use a towel, go ahead and just slide that other one off, twisting it back and forth, it'll slide off a lot easier than using your blunt force. Then obviously wipe it down with the towel so there's no WD-40 there anymore. And then what you do, grab yourself some hairspray. Go ahead and put hairspray all over this. Obviously you probably might wanna watch the hairspray doesn't go all over your scooter. So maybe take a paper towel, put it underneath the bottom while you're spraying it like this. Spray it over the metal pipe right there and the grip will slip right on and the hairspray will give that extra stickiness inside it as it dries and it'll be a very beautiful fit. We used to do this back in the day that all our BMX bikes. Now there are a couple different options here. I'm gonna use the simplest option since I don't see my foreseeable future using the old controller since I am swapping it out, of course, with the 1000 watt controller. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the brake line connector here, which is a red and black wire, very thin. 
That is a female. On the old controller, it is a male, and I need this. So I'm going to go ahead and snip off this male connector for the brake on my old controller and go ahead and wire that in to my new controller. I will be using the brake one here. I'll go ahead and be doing red to yellow, black to black. And now obviously with the modification, our old power switch won't work with our proper connectors. So one way to do it is, the easiest way is take the one, the blue and red, it says power lock, and then take a curved paper clip, just the end of it, and go ahead and put it inside of the pins. And so it loops around, so one pin, of course, in one hole, the other pin in the other hole, you'll hear a click, that's the relay inside of the controller and that will keep the power on to the unit the entire time. Now, after hooking up the motor to the controller, if you are getting a reverse spin, meaning that when you hit the throttle, it's actually moving in the reverse motion, what you need to do, and actually I'm doing that, let me show you real briefly here. So again, as I'm putting the throttle, it's trying to go backwards instead of forwards. So what you need to do here is you need to take the blue, which is on top, and the yellow which is on bottom and you need to reverse them and that will give you the forward motion. So what you do how to do that, it's going to be a little bit difficult to get the inside micro shot but right where my thumb is there's a little tab right on top. Let's look at the blue one here. There's this little itty bitty flip tab right there. You want to push that down with like a paper clip. It'll slip right out and then use like something like a razor blade to go ahead and lift that tab back up so that when you reverse them, those little clips will stick back and it won't come out of the connector. So we're gonna do that to the yellow one and just literally switch this connector, put it where the yellow one was, put the yellow one where the blue one was. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the finished product. I don't have it mounted in. I actually just set it in there and then have my battery packs in the back. You can totally mount it in there if you really want. You'll probably have to bend one of these or get rid of one edge to be able to fit it in there properly, but I'll show you what it looks like all bundled up. I just kind of took it out so I can show you a little bit. All right, so we have our XT60 connector here, the red and black, that goes into our inline battery packs, which I'll show you in just a second. And then again, most of these will be unplugged. I'm not using the one that says brakes. I'm not using the one that says sport. I am using the power lock ones, which again, we put in there and put the paper clip inside that to short that out so it's always on. So that becomes my on switch. I do not have anything plugged up to the reset switch. There's no on switch anymore down over here on the side of the scooter. I have my little port closed up. Everything is wired back up. I'll show you the throttle in just a second. We have our blue and brown, which goes into our blue and yellow. That's for our motor. We have the red and black, which is connected to the red and black coming out of the port here, as we can see right there. And then we also have the back one here, which is attached to the brake. So the brake line goes all the way through the back. That's what's coming out of the port here. We have our old power supply computer here. Remember, we have the green, red, and black hooked up here. And besides that, that's completely it. So let me show you how I wrap it around a little bit prettier over here in the corner. And then I'll show you the battery packs and the throttle. Obviously, you can make it more prettier than this. You can get a little bit more streamlined with some zip ties and stuff like that. But in the pinch of making this video, I just set it in there. Again, when the top is closed, I don't use the crossbar because I pull out these batteries. And what I do is I always unplug the batteries from the controller after I'm done using because it will be under phantom load, which means you do, it will suck the power slowly from you. And that's probably not a good thing. So I always disconnect this. I set my top on and I just use a couple screws, honestly, so I don't have to screw the whole entire thing in and it totally works just fine. I do have one of the batteries is about half full. So let me show you now my throttle system here. I got my cell phone holder. I got my little canvas military bag on the top. I put on my left grip. I have my throttle here. Now with this system, the way I wired it, it will always stay on regardless if the key is on or not. But the key does show you the voltage. And again, I have one battery pack that is not fully charged. That's why we say 46.5. We turn that off, you're good to go, but the scooter will stay on entirely. It's variable speed. 
which is absolutely fantastic. I really like that. I put up here my Samsung S8 Plus, which I'm filming on. Absolutely fantastic. Real simple to slip that variable throttle on. We have a tightening screw right there. Once that throttle is on, of course, then just wrap it down. It's kind of hard to see, but you just wrap it down with the other wires here. I used a couple zip ties and those little bundles that came with the scooter. And then of course, into the bottom here, put my little latch back on and everything is wired up good to go. For this portion of the video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a cobalt battery. This is a 24 volt, two amp battery right here. There is the part number. I will try my best to link it in the description box below the video. We have a power source, cobalt power source right on top, has two USBs so you literally could charge a device while you're using your scooter, electric bike, etc. Has a belt clip here, as we can see. It's supposed to clip on a construction worker's belt, power his phone, power something else, but of course we're not using it for that. This again, 24 volt, 2 amp per battery with one power source on top of here. Here is my power source that I just drilled into here. What I did is I actually took apart the power source. There's two Phillips screws, one here, one here, that will remove the clip. And then you have these two holes here and here. Those expose, those little screws in there is a very inconvenient when I say that because it is a security tamper-proof Torx. And you're gonna need a long one right there. The precise sizing on that one is TT10, and again, it is a tamper-proof security Torx. There is a little indention right in the middle of it, which makes it different than regular Torx. So this is our end result, and I'll walk you through it here. We have 10-gauge wire coming out of it. We have, of course, red and black, positive and negative. That is a XT60 connector right there. I will link all this again in the description box below so you know what I'm talking about. There is the power source little box there. So for this process, you want to go ahead and remove the screws. Now I put them back in. So for this portion right here, why it's kind of an empty shell like this is I actually, again, I gutted it. I took out the motherboard inside, which is right here. I took this out before I obviously drilled it because you're going to be drilling in right into this section here. And if you hit one of these little itty bitty fuses or whatnot, you could ruin your USB ports or something else. So anyway, what I did is I took that motherboard out. I screwed the TT nuts back in so it's connected. And then I drilled in right there in the indention there. So my wires come out just like that. And... The belt clip is not being blocked, so I could still use that as well. So let's take a look at the motherboard right here of the Cobalt power supply source here. We see a solder point right where my thumb is pointing to there. That exposes this little prong here. We're going to go ahead and solder on our black negative connector to that one there. And we're going to go ahead and solder on our red positive connector to the soldering point right where my thumb is pointing to behind the capacitor right there. And that obviously goes to this one. So positive negative, the middle one, we're not going to touch at all. Here is what my connector looks like here. Again, 10 gauge wire. That is about, I'd say a solid 10 inches per wire right there, maybe 11. Soldered into my XT60 connector with shrink wrap. And again, I probably should have used different color wire, but in a pinch, you just got to do what you got to do. So I just marked it positive and negative with the shrink wrap there. And the XT60 connector is kind of hard to see, but it has a little positive symbol. It has a positive symbol on top, and it has a negative symbol right there, which is kind of hard to see on camera. So let's go ahead and strip the ends of these wires here, exposing maybe a centimeter or so. And then we're gonna go ahead and bend the copper wire on. We're gonna bend it into position, and you're gonna wanna lay these pretty much flat because you want it to be able to slide back into the case and then obviously make sure you have some good solder connection points. You might want to use a little bit of raised up metal soldered in and then solder the wire to the metal. If you're a good solder, I'm a pretty poor solderer, but I get the job done. Wrap it with some shrink wrap or insulation, 
electrical tape, and then of course the wires will be coming out of the power source right here. When you hook up a multimeter to it, it registers 24, 24.5. You could even get up to 25, it depends what kind of voltage is coming out of your battery. All right, so these are the batteries inside my scooter here. As you can see here, both the power sources are on top of the batteries, and it has a little battery reader there, which mine are about halfway. You got both lines coming out of each power source into, let's go ahead and bring them out so we can get a better look at it. Okay, so what we have here is we have, again, 224 volt, two amp each, but now I've created an inline. So now, if you stuck a multimeter on the end of this, we would register 48 because we're going inline, meaning both of these equal one now because of this next connector that I've put in here. So both lines feed into this connector which feeds into my 1000 watt controller right here. And these are XT60 connectors, so if you're wondering, all this is, I redid my male connector to my female connectors on my controller. You don't have to do this, but they are nice connectors. Now how we made it in line, we have a very small 10 gauge wire under here that's just looped around in a little horseshoe shape right there. I've stripped the wire and I soldered it in with shrink wrap and electrical. I have then looped in one side, and I'm sorry, the electrical tape is covering that up, into a male connector, and right underneath this portion of the male connector is your positive. So I've gone in one positive, then looped it around to another male connector, and that one is negative here. So we're going positive, looped around to a negative. Both those are male connectors. And our female connectors from our battery packs are going into this loop around here. We have my rear battery. The two lines are going in here. Of course, red is positive, black is negative, vice versa. Our front battery is going into that connector there, which leads into that one. So again, the bottom of the horseshoe is right here. Now on top here, we have very short 10 gauge wire going into a female connector right here, XT60 female connector. Okay, so on the top here, we have our negative side. On this side is our positive side. So the square portion is the positive. This portion on the top is negative. We have one line running from my negative to my negative, and then we have one line running from positive to the positive portion of this one here. This, again, this one here, after it goes through this series of the line loop around now, we're cranking out 48, 48.5 estimation. Sometimes you get almost 49 out of that. That one connects to my 1000 watt controller mail plug, and that's how you get 48 inline volts out of two battery pack that are supposed to be for drills or battery operated tools. And just in case you're wondering, this is how I charge it. It detaches from the battery pack just like this and you fire it on your charger, you're up and running, good to go. And that's how you can get up and running 30 miles per hour on your Razer E200, E300. But just note that you're not gonna go very far with that kind of speed. It's gonna be short-lived because it's gonna be so powerful. Bigger the batteries, the more amps, obviously the more distance you can get. And just in case you're wondering, I will go ahead and link all of these items in the description box below so you know where to pick them up, one-stop shop. So take a look at the channel, subscribe to the channel, and hit that thumbs up button if you appreciate appreciated the video and we'll see you guys on the next video.